The magic of video games is in letting us fulfill our greatest fantasies. Whether he's violently beating up mentally ill comedians as a billionaire in an other king game suit, sleeping for 8 hours like some mythical hero of the ages, and shortening your lifespan in exchange for a hug from a woman. Scorn caters to a particular crowd of those who always wondered what it feels like to give birth to yourself or to lose your virginity while inside a live insect that's currently being dissected. I don't know which one of these particular fantasies Scorn has tried to appeal to in me, but it sure reminded me about my doctor's appointment. After all, he was very concerned when he realized I wasn't just rambling about the disadvantages of certain medieval capital punishment methods when I said there's too much blood on the stool. Scorn is a badly fluid drenched love letter to the art of HR Giger, the guy who wanted to draw dicks everywhere so much. He created an entire art style, just an excuse to do so. His art style is biomechanical, alien and sexual, which solidifies Scorn as a horror game, because nothing is more alien and terrifying for gamers than sex. Howdy. I'm Spigazu. Happy New Year! Welcome to the magical world of the inside of your Nesquik Diddle Cave. But before that, there is one more thing I have to do. Bend over. Scorn is a grueling reenactment of what happens when a vegan goes to hell. Imagine being inside the educational French cartoon Once Upon a Time Life, but somehow Lehman Brothers managed to cause a deep recession here as well. No more lasers for you, c**t robots. Go find another way to your stepsister, quickly, before she disappears in the depths of the washing machine forever. At its core, Scorn is a puzzle game dressed in survival horror clothes with combat so tacked on it's nothing but a protruding swollen tumor trying to disguise itself as a fancy hat. Please notice that I use the term puzzle game instead of adventure game. I have a gripe with video game genres. When I hear adventure, I picture hanging from a plane after kicking a bedouin in the crotch or getting mauled by a bear. Not slowly and carefully piloting a foreskin drone in order to activate the primordial Snickers vein. And what is a point and click adventure? <laughs> Every game is a point and click adventure game if you really drink about it. In Call of Duty, for example, you point and you click, and you go on an adventure filled with loud gunshots and N words like a Wu Tang Clan a cappella concert. In Civilization, you point and you click, and you go on an adventure of becoming weirdly prejudiced against Indians at an alarming speed. Even the Excel spreadsheet where you do your uh, tax calculations is a point and click adventure where you go through various stages filled with impossible challenges just to discover you've been dead all along, spoiler alert. In Scorn, Surgeon Simulator 2, we play as John Colonoscopy, who got tired of being partially melted into the floor, and we slide through every nook and cranny through this beautiful environment reminiscent of a Sistine Chapel found in the filthy basement of an abandoned sex shop to get some hand cream for his baby calluses before his skin completely flakes off and perishes like white dandelions in the gentle summer wind. My hands look like this, so hairs can look like this. We squeeze through different sizes of an intestine navigate the forest of boners and walls with more holes in them than a Bosnian kindergarten. Finally, after years of players' demands, the developers finally caved in like a human skull after buying a new FIFA game and eventually delivered. Now we finally get a chance to fist a foreskin to open anus and to weaponize our leprosy like we always wanted to. Representation is important, people. The place has many facilities to make our stay inside someone else's inflammated appendix more comfortable and fun. Like this testicle vending machine, where you can pick new undercarriage based on their shape, power and microwave compatibility. But what is the game all about, you might ask? Your brain is functional, in which case, why are you watching this video? Scorn has no backstory or context, so you don't really know why these smelly Indonesian flowers suddenly give birth to people who look like Chad Squidward 
Note that people is a generous term, as we're talking about western backpackers who say namaste before endangering rare Asian fauna. It's purely visual and surreal. If you want to get a grasp on this story, you need to channel your inner bomb disposal expert. Just guess and remember to be yourself, dude. The same thing is with puzzles and machines. Sometimes it's clear you're trying to open the sphinctery gates to the other wonders of this world, but sometimes Scorn just shows me this peanut becoming sentient through xenomorph vibration just to stare at me like a horny and innocent anime schoolgirl. And it clearly wants me to interact with it, but what do I do exactly? Do I start the machine? Do I fix the machine? Do I recalibrate the machine? Do I... Do I make the machine feel good or something? Or here, what do I do? I never thought I would google how to actually drop the baby. And game, why do you want me to perform an abortion and put the fetus in the blender? I mean, I appreciate the opportunity, I, I, tr I truly do, but why? Oh, to euthanize the comatose, got it! <laughs> Silly me. These and many other questions will be asked during our trip funded by National Scornographic. Questions like... Why does my boner have a space program? How many tapeworms can I fit inside of me? Why is there a, such a clear, bright and beautiful sky in Lahore, Pakistan? Why are my belly arms misbehaving? How is cheese made anyway? If I had two tongues and licked a prolapse of a decomposing sewer rat and a Nintendo Switch game cartridge at the same time, which one would make me gag first? If I were to perform CPR on my gun, where would I put my mouth? Oh my god, why does she keep sucking? Why are my aggressive hemorrhoids suddenly distractible? This game is so unrealistic. At what point is this video getting unmonetized? Not demonetized, because I'm not monetized. I mean, YouTube forcing me to compensate for their psychological damage. Why is there a regular dentist chair? And why doesn't my dentist wear a protective face mask? Doesn't he realize that this is a serious violation of sanitary regulation? Ah! Why is the f Xenomorph playing Among Us. Is Among Us the Gati of gaming? Is Gati the cultural reform of the late pharaoh Akhenaten of pop music? And don't forget kings. The real colonoscopy was the friends we made along the way. Hence, our cousin Franklin. Hey man, I told you not to lick that 5G tower. Now look at you. You look like a, like a fallout ghoul trying to touch the Pope. And you have to ride this Walmart fat card like these default nation lard sponges. Also known as the cosplayers of the Fallout 1 villain. But okay, I know you peeked in your mother's uterus, so let's go for a ride. Judging by the look of things, there must be Disneyland somewhere around here. Let me just consult this telepathic ovary to rearrange the tracks. Oh boy, I can't wait to get a hug from the inside out Mickey Mouse. Wanna go to the kiddie pool? Enjoying your ride? Enjoying getting chainsawed in half, just like Walt Disney intended? Great, now you can help me open that thing. Come on, I know your dream is to have your flesh fully melted someday, and I can relate, but you need to get a grip. I'm really sorry guys, he's a lad of poor luck. He could never fully finish any task, including being born. And there is no one else to help me, just look at all these lazy f lying around. Excuse me? The game is a slow burn, so patience is key. Scorn will test your skills and push you to the limit. I hope you're mentally ready to perform some Lovecraftian mastectomies, rob dead bodies in search of sex toys, as well as achieve the impossible and find the mythical clitoris. Not only that, you will have to find three clitorises and align them in one row. Coincidentally, it was beyond my ability, so I had to power through hours of walkthroughs, which led me to a conclusion that the clitoris was never there to begin with. It's an abstract concept invented by women to communicate that their partners don't show them enough emotional vulnerability and don't let them use their ultra-rare Mechanicum Ordinatus Ulator. Ulator? See you later. Later in the game you also have to time it and rotate it like that Charisma Pie minigame from Oblivion so that Arvana Thelas lets me go down to her basement to slay that hairy beast. Combat is clunky and awkward. Enemies serve as testimony to why you should always tip your licensed circumcision mohel for your annual Brit Melach. The first weapon, you know, this thing, has much smaller range than you think. Once you find your way around it, then it's your typical Twink's Gambit. Thrust, thrust, think about baseball, thrust again. Remember to always let them spray their juices before decapitating.
Just because of some one hit kills I had to repeat this entire part so many times. Memorize the optimal way to check for lumps and tumors on your testes just to get one hit killed. Later I realized I could use my um trypophobia shower head to heal and my multiple deaths were a result of my own oversight. So I can't really blame the game developers but also I'm not gonna blame myself. So I blame God! What, you didn't think that this alien parasite with 18 assholes will give you magical berries that will heal you? Have you ever played a video game before? And it is just one of the items. The other one is this Bluetooth compatible pentagram shrimp with downloadable updates. Basically what if we took this keycard mechanic from every single other game but made it more cock? So when you're admiring the miracle of birth, be careful not to get sniped by the cloaca-faced chicken, which coincidentally was also my middle school nickname. Another enemy is the patron saint of skipped leg days. Upper body strength is the only acceptable strength and it will share its strength with you, leaving an imprint of their immaculate physique inside your ribcage. There is also a Bioshock POW cam version of Krang from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Please do not google Pizza Time Remastered on Nickelodeon. Unfortunately, the fight is not as interesting as it sounds and nowhere near as memorable as Pizza Time Remastered on Nickelodeon, which you shouldn't google. That pregnant lady just chases you around the IKEA's cages filled with human arms department. There's also this really agitated wall hand. What is your story, oh mysterious twitchy hand from the wall? And why aren't you at the Bethesda's office working on new ways to collapse reality? No time to contemplate it as a pregnant lady chases me with a rocket launcher as usual. Look, sweetheart, I'm not escaping responsibility. I just discovered a sudden inner impulse to cardio. I need these cigarettes and it's not my fault they are only sold deep inside the Siberian forest. So, combat sucks, puzzles can be frustrating, the progress is measured by the amount of penis and view experience and the level design is confusing. Please make sure that your building contractors are at least somewhat familiar with Euclidean geometry. The main and one could argue the only reason to play the game is the art style and the atmosphere. The game is about appreciating the sweat and effort of every overworked, underpaid and critically underhugged Serbian level designer, who spent long laborious hours making the environment as Freudian and demonetizable as possible and to craft the most perfect butthole choir. Sphincter POV your spine after sitting in front of a computer for too long. Edvar Munch's scream from wish.com. This insect disappointed at your life choices. Um, this is not how we do the YMCA. The Berliner Wall. Oh, so now you're ready to settle down. God's forgotten third nipple. I... I, I should call her. And this, um... You know, um... Uh... Yeah and so many other things I am unable to describe. Listen, the script for this video had so much filth that my browser decided to clear browsing history on its own. Via Sue's Also, it is really hard to describe anything in this game without repeating certain words over and over, so I decided to add subtitles in Hebrew just in case. Here's to becoming viral among the chosen people. Mazel tov. This game is a visual feast, a kind of feast that makes you projectile vomit for the entire week. It is absolutely worth it. This is something you just experience, immerse yourself in it and take it slow. Awe inspiring and majestic like a virtual art gallery but nobody stops you from licking the exhibits. Wow, so beautiful, makes me wanna crucify myself. Some haters might say it's style over substance. We could point and laugh at them, but I am not sure if that's acceptable. See, that's the thing with laughing at the disabled. Damned if you do, damned if you don't, am I right? In scorn, style is the substance. Combat and puzzles are a complementary fidget spinner thrown at you just to complete the formality that scorn is technically a game. And I believe it is redundant. It's all about the masterfully crafted environment that's both alien and familiar, composed of things we know well and things we've never seen. Who is that Pokemon? That's right, it's Goofy. Just like in my apartment, sometimes it is hard to tell where the wall ends and intelligent fleshy mold begins. You look at this thing and at this point you don't know if it's gonna kill you, suck you off or send you to an apocalyptic eldritch dimension where nightmares are sent to be punished. Such as dating after 30, am I right fellas? <laughs> uh, don't worry, it's not loaded, I just like the taste of it in my mouth. You create intestine tunnels to uncover dead corpses of mossy aliens. 
and impregnated the alien planet with triple clitoral piercings for some reason. So how can you not like this game? The confusing level design and the backtracking doesn't seem to be made bad on purpose, but I would say it works. <coughs> Makes it feel more oppressive and otherworldly, as if my fever just took LSD. The unique design and sheer attention to gross detail brilliantly conveys that feeling when your friends show you their babies. Oh, look at him, big boy, so handsy, can't keep hands to himself, he's gonna fit right in in Activision Blizzard. Our little medulloblastomas, they metastasize so fast. Oh wow, she's so shapeless and gelatinous, she's gonna grow up to be... So the game is like affordable healthcare, definitely not for everybody, even though it does look like the cleanest hospital in Newcastle. But it is frustrating and there's pleasure in pain and pain in pleasure. It's a beautiful tribute to HR Geeker and that Polish guy Beskin. And I want this game to prove that we can have artistic experiences based solely on beautifully crafted and detailed environments, like a painting with some interactivity but with no game elements. We could argue that the word game indicates it needs to be interactive by definition. However, culture and technology develop faster than semantics. Let's look at the word phone. How often do you use your phone to actually call someone, instead of using this super advanced microcomputer for GPS? Gaming. Watching Netflix cuties on public transportation while shaking your head noticeably so people can see you do not condone it. Scheduling D&D sessions. Taking pictures. Learning Spanish so the green owl lets you see your family again. Feeling bad about yourself. Feeling good about yourself. Or just filling yourself up. Ascending into wisdom and descending into barbarity and generally making it a fruit basket full of juicy personal data for your spying tech mega corporation of choice. So what I'm saying is, you can take that word game and stick it up your... Marmite motorway. And I suggest starting from that side if you want it to go gently into that good night. If this was just a walking simulator with no puzzles or combat and wasn't VR, and you could just walk around, enjoy some relaxing Chinese acupuncture, savor the meticulously chiseled architecture that's getting Thanosed for some reason, and chill on the beach chairs, it would be just a perfect visit to a fancy art exhibit. And nothing makes a fine glass of 2008 Domaine le fleuve Pligny Montraché les Folatières more palatable than the screaming of the melting people. Thank you for watching. This video is bizarre, disgusting, and it probably broke every single YouTube guideline. So I'm sorry if it ends up on YouTube Kids. So if you liked it, then um, like it and show it to your medicine students. Your support means a lot to me. I had to sit through so many ugly dicks to make this video, and recently I shaved my head to trick Make-A-Wish Foundation, and I told them that my biggest dream is to shell out for AIDS Shadow Legends. So they gave me a copy of Unregistered Hypercam 2, and showed me how to steal videos from other channels. That's it for today. Take care, and remember to wash your... Also, I'm not a real doctor and this video does not constitute medical advice. If you haven't put any jars in there recently, then that place really shouldn't be bleeding. Bye! Your Nesquik Little Cave.